Hello, I'm Susan Wu with the Edmonton Regional Learning Consortium. And I'm Irene Heffel, also with ERLC. The purpose of this video is to explain the process we used to identify essential learning outcomes for school leaders. On our Essential Learning Outcomes Google site, there will be an editable slide deck similar to the one you see in this video that you can use with your school teams. You're invited to make a copy of it and adjust it to fit your context. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 6 territory, a traditional meeting grounds, gathering place and traveling route to the Cree, Soto, Blackfoot, Métis, Diné, and Nakota Sioux. We acknowledge all the many First Nations, Métis and Inuit, whose footsteps have marked these lands for centuries. Please remember, if you're editing the downloadable slide deck, to insert the treaty land acknowledgement that's used for your region. In June of this year, one of the initiatives we've taken on is bringing together 39 educators who graciously volunteered their time to participate in the ERLC Essential Learning Outcomes, otherwise known as ELOs, working groups. These curriculum experts came from various school jurisdictions, including Edmonton Public and Catholic, Greater St. Albert Catholic, Fort McMurray Public and Catholic, Elk Island Public, Sturgeon, Northern Gateway, Pemina Hills, Evergreen Catholic, and Kitaskanao Tribal Council Educational Authority. They spent four and a half days working collaboratively and coming to a consensus on what the ELOs are for the core subject areas of English language arts, math, social studies, and science in grades one to nine. We'd like to share the process we used to identify the essential learning outcomes as well as the resources produced by our collaborative groups. There are three main resources you will be able to access on our Essential Learning Outcomes Google site. The first is an editable program of studies if you choose to engage your school teams in the process or to work through it independently. The second one is a program of studies with the Essential Learning Outcomes identified. The third resource is a program of studies with the ELOs and I statements, which are learning goals for students that correlate with curriculum outcomes. You're probably wondering why we decided to create a resource and a website that captures the essential learning outcomes for grades one to nine in the core subject areas. What we wanted to do was to create flexible resources that teachers can use to support their teaching, regardless of what the learning environment looks like. There are many reasons why this resource can support your school jurisdiction or school team. Prioritizing outcomes is important for planning for instruction and assessment. When you consider our recent school closures due to the COVID-19 pandemic, having a resource that already identifies the ELOs can be useful for teachers in the fall. For example, if a teacher isn't familiar with the previous year's curriculum and they have students who have experienced disruptions to their learning, they can refer to the identified ELOs as a starting point for planning. For beginning teachers or teachers who are new to a grade level and or subject area, this resource supports deeper understanding of the program of studies and guides planning, pacing and assessment. School jurisdictions across Alberta do not have equitable access to professional development, consultants, and school leaders who can lead the work of identifying ELOs. Therefore, the resources on our website create greater equity for professional learning. Use the resource as is, or time permitting, you also could engage your school teams in the actual process of identifying ELOs. Teachers can also be reassured that the perspectives of multiple Alberta school jurisdictions were included in identifying the ELOs as building consensus is an integral part of the process. For this slide, ask staff to identify how each type of teacher could use the editable ELO resource. 
This is one of the teaching quality standards. It asks teachers to apply current and comprehensive practices in order to meet the needs of students. If we are to follow these guidelines, then identifying essential outcomes is the first step. Teachers can communicate high expectations through learning goals to their students and provide high quality assessments that accurately reflect learner outcomes. Before you start identifying ELOs, two critical things need to be in place. Everyone needs to have the same understanding of what the word essential means, and the process you use needs to be consistent. Calibrating the process means that everyone has the same understanding of how to approach identifying ELOs and how to communicate the end product. Best assessment practice tells us that understanding of curricular outcomes needs to be measurable. Jay McTighe and Ken O'Connor's article, Seven Practices for Effective Learning, 2005, states that assessment becomes responsive when students are given appropriate options for demonstrating knowledge, skills, and understanding. Note that this does not include values and attitudes, as these outcomes are difficult to consistently evaluate. The purpose of this activity is to activate background knowledge. It is important to build a context and to use a metaphor to assist with understanding what is essential. Participants will be asked to discuss in small groups which ingredients are essential for creating an exceptional pizza. Ideas will vary depending on the discussions. It is important to draw parallels to what participants articulate about choosing essential ingredients and choosing ELOs. For example, a teacher may say that the foundation of an exceptional pizza includes yeast, water, olive oil, bread, flour, and salt. However, it is pizza without is, is it pizza without the tomato sauce and cheese? A parallel that could be drawn from this would be that for students to get to conceptual understanding or transfer learning, they need to have strong foundational knowledge. This information comes from Chinook's Edge School Division number 73's Essential Outcomes Google site. We thank them for allowing us to use this in our presentation. Essential outcomes do not address all outcomes in a program of studies. Essential outcomes focus on what learning is critical for a student to take away from the current grade to be able to move forward. There are many approaches to use when determining essential learning outcomes. Recognize the process we're sharing is not the only way to identify ELOs, but the lenses you do use influence the choices made. For the purpose of our ELO resource, we wanted to use three critical lenses that align with conceptual learning transfer, which is a feature of the new curriculum architecture, ensure that assessment planning and instruction provide rigor in the learning goals for students and provide the necessary foundational knowledge for student success. In the transfer lens, does the skill or concept provide applications to many academic disciplines, different grade levels, or different real life connections? Under the rigor lens, rigor comes from the challenge of the learning goals. Consider which DOK level does the concept or skill alignment align with? We will discuss DOK levels in the next slide. In the scaffolding lens, instructional scaffolding provides the necessary cognitive support for students to be ready for learning at the next level. Before explaining Norman Webb's depth of knowledge or DOK framework, I wanted to share a graphic created by educational author and consultant, Eric Francis, which creates a memorable metaphor. DOK1 can be equated to the game of Jeopardy, where contestants need to recall facts and details for trivia questions, or otherwise known as knowledge acquisition. In DOK2, if you've ever watched an episode of Hell's Kitchen, Competitors are given opportunities to apply their knowledge in a specific task, such as cooking within a specific cuisine or theme, otherwise known as knowledge application. In DOK3, 
in the reality show Survivor, contestants must undergo a series of spontaneous competitions and challenges that requires big picture strategic thinking and analysis to be successful, otherwise known as knowledge analysis. And finally, in DOK4, in the Shark Tank show, budding entrepreneurs present their novel or unique inventions to a panel of business investors in the hopes that they will commit to funding their product. The investors are looking for new inventions that are thoroughly researched, well-developed, and marketable. Products have to be designed to demonstrate synthesis of knowledge. This is also known as knowledge augmentation or learning transfer. Oftentimes within assessment and evaluation, we are gauging students' understanding. However, there are different degrees of understanding as illustrated by Norman Webb's depth of knowledge framework. This framework categorizes the levels of thinking students are expected to demonstrate. In Eric Francis's article, What is the Depth of Knowledge? He mentions Webb's DOK can vary on a number of dimensions, such as the following. The level of cognitive complexity of information students should be expected to know. How well they should be able to transfer this knowledge to different contexts. How well they should be able to form generalizations, as well as how much prerequisite knowledge they must have in order to grasp ideas. Please be aware when having discussions about the DOK alignment of curricular outcomes, it is necessary to have ELOs that reflect a variety of DOK levels. For example, you can't get to, trans to the transfer learning of DOK4 if you haven't mastered the foundational recall knowledge of DOK1. In the last lens, instructional scaffolding is a process through which a teacher adds supports for students in order to enhance learning and aid in the mastery of tasks. These supports are temporary and adjustable. As students master the assigned tasks, the supports are gradually removed. When looking at curricular outcomes through the scaffolding lens, think about whether the outcome is necessary to bridge learning that's expected at the next level or progression. At this point, you may want to ask your teaching team, what questions do you have about any of the three lenses? You can gauge your team's readiness and decide if you need to provide additional professional learning on the lenses or if you're ready to proceed with identifying ELOs. Here are the steps for the process of identifying ELOs. The first one is review the three lenses. Ensure that your entire team has the same understanding of transfer, rigor, and scaffolding. Next, identify the rigor of the outcomes you're previewing. DOK levels of ELOs should be varied. Then after that, you would do a preliminary highlighting of choices for the ELOs. And the fourth step would be to collaborate and discuss whether the selected outcomes are actually ELOs mm. or not using the three lenses to reach consensus. Students have a right to know what their learning goals are in a language that they understand. Hence, the creation of I statements comes from the program of studies. The creation of learning goals is the final step of this process. It is recommended that this is done after the ELOs have been chosen. However, if you have curriculum experts on your teaching team, they may choose to create learning goals simultaneously as they select the ELOs. Keep in mind, learning goals begin with I and are followed by a verb. This holds students accountable to know what they are learning at all times. Learning goals are explicitly emphasized and reviewed on a regular basis. I statements are learning goals for students. They are written in student-friendly language. These are typically visible in the classroom as they are being learned. When students see learning goals, they know that they are actively focused on them for the duration. The use of learning goals should become part of the regular learning routine. In, addi in addition, 
parents should also be able to access student learning goals. When teachers are working in collaborative teams, establish, adhere to, and communicate group norms and deadlines. Decide what needs to be consistent. For example, if you provide a legend for color highlighting, everyone will have the same understanding of what the color yellow means when it's highlighted and what you can be flexible on. Typically, checks would be done at the beginning and end sessions are necessary in order to review concepts, share progress, insights, and challenges to make it a reflective learning process for participants. The process that we followed would be that on day one, we used it for calibrating everyone to focus on the lenses and understand them. The subsequent days, uh, we took, you can take a collaborative team approach for each subject area or focus on one subject area per person, depending if you are in elementary, junior high or high school. And then the subsequent days, you could work either independently um, or you could approach it as a team. And on days three, four, and five, you could work on uh, revising um, by reaching consensus. And then on the last day, for example, you could also create I statements. So depending on how you would like to approach it, you want to be able to provide choices for how your team collaborates. On our ELO website, under the tab of process planning resources, you can access and download a copy of the editable program of studies for grades one to nine for ELA, social, math, and science. There is great value in engaging teaching teams to participate in collaboratively identifying ELOs. Each grade level or subject team should have access to shared folders that you create in your drive. Try to establish consistent rules for how to represent information. Teams will need to approach the work so that ELOs are completed by a certain date. Again, something to consider. If everything is important, then nothing is. ELOs help teachers to recognize the most important elements in the curriculum that impact planning, instruction, and assessment. Teachers will likely have many questions throughout the process, and there must be a designated person or team available at all times to address group concerns or if there are any questions that you require support in answering, you can contact myself, Susan Wu at erlc.ca or Irene at irene.happel at erlc.ca. And this concludes our presentation. We wanted to also provide special thanks to Chinook's Edge School Division number 73, who very graciously provided us access to their editable curriculum resources for this initiative. Thank you.